says to you, why are you doing this? They'll say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to him, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem, and went to the temple. When he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Have you noticed that some things are just misnamed? Uh, the names given them don't match up to the reality we see. Think of a few examples. Have you ever heard of something called a government organization? What about when something is described as pretty ugly? That doesn't really make sense. How about a more famous one, the Civil War? If you've read and studied about it, there wasn't much civil about it, was there? Or a more modern version of that holy war. Not much holy about war, is there? Well, in this passage we've read from Mark 11, uh, your Bible, like mine, might have a heading for this paragraph that says, the triumphal entry. I think that is seriously misnamed. The name certainly doesn't come from the text itself. Um, in the ancient world, a triumph or a triumphal entry was reserved for victorious war generals and emperors and things like that. And they would return home after a successful campaign and they would ride into town on a big stallion, a white stallion, often surrounded by pomp and circumstance and great crowds. And behind them often would come a line of the conquered people in chains, making sort of a parade for everybody to see. Not quite the scene we find here in Mark chapter 11. There was an old traditional Jewish rabbi teaching that said this, quote, when the Messiah comes, if Israel is ready, he will come riding a white horse. But if Israel is not ready, he will ride a donkey. Well, Israel 
was not ready for Jesus. One of the prophets spoke of this day that we're studying today. Zechariah, in the ninth chapter, in the ninth verse, says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah, of course, foresaw the peaceful king coming into Jerusalem, riding this young animal. And that passage is quoted by some of the other gospel writers in their description of the same event. The picture is not one of a conquering war hero, but it's really a humble scene. Jesus comes into the city of Jerusalem bearing signs of peace. Also, if you read the other gospel accounts and all four writers of the Gospels tell the story. If you read the other ones, you'll discover that as Jesus rides into town, he's actually crying. In fact, the word that's used is one that means hard crying, intense weeping. You might remember that as Jesus crested the hill and saw Jerusalem come into view, he cried out because he knew that her people would reject him and that they were eventually to be restored, destroyed as a result. And so we have a weeping man riding a young donkey. Triumphal entry? I don't think that's the right description. The Bible says, the multitude of his disciples as he rode into town down that winding dirt road from the Mount of Olives spread out their cloaks on the ground in front of him and, and, and laid down branches in his path. That's where uh, the term Palm Sunday uh, comes from. I guess you, we might describe this as sort of a, a poor man's red carpet treatment as he rides into town. Jerusalem, of course, is getting ready to, to celebrate its biggest week of the year, its busiest week, the Passover festival. There were untold thousands who would stream into the city, and they'd be coming in at the same time Jesus was coming in. The majority of them, of course, were walking Jesus' road and some of that crowd already had a fever pitch because of the festival. No doubt got caught up in the spectacle of a famous man riding into the city on a donkey. And those that knew their Old Testaments, their Bible, knew the prophets, though they, they might not have understood them exactly, um, they were caught up in the fever of it all. They were looking for a Messiah, you see, just like everyone else. And so, so many uh, joined this ragtag parade of Jesus' followers. Sort of imagine that group. Uh, you had the 12, of course, and you had the larger group of disciples that followed them from place to place, most of them very poor common folks, a lot of women and children in that crowd. And then don't you imagine that in that crowd were people who used to be blind, who used to be possessed, who one time couldn't walk, but now could leap for joy. I imagine that Lazarus was in that crowd. This man who had in fact been dead only a short time ago until Jesus came to Bethany, his hometown. Now, Jesus had a following. He had become well-known. 
And now as he approaches Jerusalem at a very momentous time, Passover, people are excited. Uh, Passover was a time that, that celebrated God's deliverance of Israel from slavery in Egypt. So there, there were no doubt many who joined the throng around this man on a donkey thinking maybe he was the one he was the one, perhaps, who would rescue Israel this time, deliver them like Moses had delivered them from Egypt. Maybe this man would deliver them from Rome. And then a chant starts up among the crowd that's surrounding him. What they're doing really is singing a song. It's an Old Testament song. It's a part of number 118 in the book of Psalms, the song book of Israel. I just want to share a few verses of that song with you. You may not realize that, that uh, some of these verses all come from the same passage. And it's from this song that these Passover pilgrims traveling into Jerusalem, the day Jesus rides through the gates into Jerusalem, it's from this song that they're singing. It's Psalm 118, and beginning at verse 22 through the end of the psalm. Listen to these words. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the, the festival sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. I'm sure several of those phrases were, were ones you've heard many times, sort of famous scriptural phrases. Did you realize they're all from the same song? The same song, the song that they're singing on this particular day. The crowd sings in particular verses 25 and 26 of Psalm 118. And they sing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's fascinating. There's this little word in Hebrew, uh, the language that that song was written in. You can hear it in the word Hosanna. It's a little word, nah. I want you to hear this verse from Psalm 118, uh, verse 25 in particular, but I want you to hear it in the original tongue. I want you to listen to this, listen for this little word, nah. Here's the verse. Ana Adonai, Hoshiana. Anna Adonai Hatsaliyana. Translated, save us please, O Lord. O Lord, please give us success. This little word, na, means basically, please. When the people in that crowd shout, Hosanna, they are saying to Jesus, save us, please. Now, I'm not sure that they understood what they were singing. We probably all sing things that we're not fully understanding. You know, when they said, save us, on this particular day, they were likely thinking of being rescued from Roman domination. They were thinking of an earthly kingdom. They were imagining perhaps a return to power, a restoration of their nation. Isn't it ironic that the true Savior 
was right in front of them, riding on a donkey. He was indeed coming into Jerusalem to save them. But this was the last week of his life. This was Sunday when this took place. By Friday, he would be dead, hung on a cross outside the walls of the city. This particular crowd on the Sunday before was shouting, Hosanna! Later in the week, another crowd would be shouting, Crucify him. And once again, they wouldn't understand what they were saying. You see, with chapter 11 of Mark, we come to the last week of Jesus' life. So if you're studying the Gospel of Mark, chapters 11 through 16 will tell the events of just seven days. But what an important week. Never before or since has there ever been a more important week. It's so easy to think that this week or that week in our lives is the most important ever because of some important event that took place in it. But no week in our lives has ever rivaled the importance of this week in Jesus's that began with a humble ride into Jerusalem on a young donkey. No week is more important than that week. Again, we can convince ourselves that certain weeks are so important, so vital to our lives. You know, I'm, I'm interested in politics, although I get tired of it like everybody else does. But I follow it, and, and of course we have a an election coming up in November. And if what is going on currently wasn't going on, that's all we'd be hearing about is the election that's coming up. And, and it's so easy to get caught up in that and, and the importance of it, and reading about it in the paper, hearing about it maybe on the radio or some other kind of broadcast, watching it 24 seven on television. And, and the reporters trying to pound into us how vital this is. We can be reminded every hour, can't we? And we can even be convinced that disaster is on its way or salvation, just depending on how an election turns out. I love the quote from syndicated columnist Cal Thomas several years ago. He wrote one time, quote, our salvation is not going to come on Air Force One. We're not going to elect our Savior. Instead, our salvation comes into, into town crying riding on a donkey with confused followers all around him. He comes into town. He goes to the temple, that great structure that had been built to worship and honor him. And it says that he looks at it and walks away, leaves town, goes back to Bethany across the hill, across Mount Olives, and he spends the night there. Doesn't even stay in Jerusalem. And at Jerusalem, the, the city of David has no place for the son of David. All Jerusalem has for him is a cross. I want you to Sort of in closing, consider this man, Jesus. Take note of his humility. Take note of his peace. Note his determination. He indeed is Savior. And 
I wonder if you've ever asked him the question that they sang that day as he rode into town. Have you ever asked Jesus, save me, please? He always welcomes that. He always welcomes new disciples, new followers. And he always welcomes back with open arms those who have fallen away and, and trusted in something else. Jesus' invitation is always open. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you that you've given us this day to remember you, to remember your son, to share in your word and in uh, your supper, to worship you. Thank you for loving us and showering blessings upon us and help us to learn better how to serve you and how to glorify your son, Jesus, who is the Savior. And we pray in his name. Amen. If you miss me from the city down here, you can find me on when the wagons come on up to bright glory. I'll be singing up there. I'll be singing up there, up there. I'll be singing up there, up there. Just come on up to bright glory. I'll be singing up there. If you miss me from the grave down here, you can find me on when the wagons come on up to bright glory. I'll be praying up there. I'll be praying up there, up there. I'll be praying up there, up there. Just come on up to bright glory. I'll be praying up there.
Say. 